Hey everybody, it's me, Jake, our Korean back again with another Bailey unboxing video. Today's unboxing is Jet Wyvern. Uh, yeah. Bailey B177. Uh, I literally got this one day after I just unboxed my, uh, Loose for the End. Speaking of which, I had that in my pocket a moment ago. <laughs> Just gonna compare it against... Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, got loose for the end here to battle against it. So, this will be fun. Also, uh, this isn't the only wyvern I have to open. Uh, give me one second. I'll grab the other one off my shelf. I've had it for a while, but I was unsure about opening it. That would be the OG wyvern from B14. Yeah. This Beyblade is old, like, I don't know, 2015, 2016 level old. Let me see if I can find the date on it, how old this thing is. Uh, there's a warning on the back. Uh, yeah, I don't know what any of this says, because it's Japanese, and I ain't Japanese. If that wasn't obvious. Yeah. Anyways, uh, before you watch the video, I want you to comment telling me if I should open this or save it for, like, collecting purposes or something. I don't know. So yeah, tell me if you want to see an unboxing of this or not, because I honestly need to know what I should do with it. So I spent like $70 on e or not eBay, Amazon, just to get a hold of this thing. Well, no, I didn't. I just had it on my Amazon list and got lucky on Christmas or Easter or something. I don't remember. All I know is I got lucky and got that. Anyways, moving on, let's get into this Beyblade. Uh, really excited they brought Wakia back to the anime. Pretty good character. And I'm about to start watching the English dub of the anime because the first episode, the first three episodes are airing within a two-day period on the 27th and 28th in the U.S. So I'm really excited to start watching the dub. And I've heard rumors of them apparently changing the voice actor for one of the characters, which makes me a little sad if that's true. But I won't know till I hear them. So you never know. Like, they changed out the voice actor for Vault midway through for no reason. And I get it, they want him to seem older, but that's just stupid to me, I guess. And besides the point, we got Jet Wyvern. And one of my favorite characters is back in the show. Okay, so we got the Wyvern ship with this really nice uh, green center to it. Love the golden green theme. Uh, jet Ring, which is basically the ratchet disc, but as a layer. So what it does is it'll free rotate against a clockwise top. So like uh, this, it free moves when the ability kicks in. Well, this constantly does that, but it doesn't go the other direction. Only, uh, what's it called? It only moves counterclockwise on the ring and locks when going against counterclockwise to help it absorb because it has rubber on these blades, which is insane. Uh, and we have one defense, a really lazy pick. Like they could have made a... Uh, What's it called? A 3 D fence. And the initials for that would be kind of funny. 3D, you know? I don't know, not that funny, but interesting. Like, they could have made a brand new chassis. Instead, they just recycled the 1D fence chassis. Which is honestly really lazy and bland, in my opinion. I mean, at least it's a cool color, but still. But they make up for that by giving us one of the best competitive usage metal discs in a nice purple repaint. The Around Disc. If you didn't know, this disc came around back in the GT series on Flare Dragon, as well as some Plastic Gen remake, which is pretty nice. Uh, it was personally one of my favorite discs, and I've used it in competitive combos before on tournaments, so it's definitely a well-worth-it disc, even if you have to spend like 50 bucks on eBay just to get a hold of it. <laughs> but now for the exclusive tip called Just, which is basically the defense tip, but the free-moving ring on the out or the ring on the outside is free-moving. And the center tip is so sharp, it's just such a bad tip for defense. Like, it has no stamina, but it does have decent LED, I've heard. I don't know. But yeah, that's basically Jet Wyvern for ya. Just a quick cash grab from Takara Tomy with a nice remake of a bay. The only reason I thought it was all that worth it is because of the cool metal disc, and because Wyvern was my third ever Beyblade, which makes it one of my favorites. So, yeah. Plus, the character that owns it is kind of similar to me, in, opi in my opinion, looks-wise. And again, I have a lot shorter hair. I mean, it's still long, because of quarantine. I've been in- I haven't had a haircut in over a year. God, I- it feels so stupid having to- or th saying that, because it's true. <laughs> or almost a year since I've had one. I've decided to grow it out. So maybe when I show my face again on camera, you'll see just how long it's gotten. 
God, this tape sucks. I forgot how much the card told me to use tape. Jesus. Christ. This Beyblade better be fun. I'm trying to salvage the box so I can display it, you know what I mean? I'm sure my fans know what I mean. Yeah. But if I'm really lucky, I got the uh, purple chassis, but I doubt I will have the purple one. My opinion. I uh, doubt I will. Oh, crud tearing. Okay, let's see. Is it the rare? Nope, it's the regular chassis, but this is a beautiful Beyblade, I must admit. Dang, that is shiny. And it does kind of fit the owner's personality. At least according to Season 1 and 2. I don't know much about Season 5 now. It's been a while since we've seen Waki in the anime. Eh. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually going to go back and get the other two Wyverns I don't have, so I have every Japanese version of Wyverns, since it's one of my faves. Sadly, they skipped it for two whole seasons. <laughs> like, none in Chosey, none in GT. But then, all of a sudden, season five, it becomes a big deal again. <laughs> Though, to be honest, I'm kind of glad they brought him back, because I just love Wyvern. It's such a cool dragon Beyblade. It's also the first clockwise spinning dragon Beyblade as well. Ever. Which is really cool, in my opinion. To have a clockwise spinning dragon bay. Not sure if it's the first ever... Uh, uh, defense Dragon Bay, though. Not sure about that one. Someone will have to tell me that in the comments. If that's right or not. To be honest, it looks so good. I doubt it'll even need the stickers on it. Plus, I suck at the stickers anyways. Plus, if I keep the... Plus, I, the stickers will come off anyways. Let's see how many stars. One star. That is sad. But this paint job is beautiful. I love this. It's smooth. This is really nice to card tell me. Did good. They did really good. It's always good to have a... Wait, what? The bearing... The ball bearings are loose. Kind of strange. Also kind of strange that they haven't put this on a Zeus Beyblade yet. But seriously, they could have remade Zeus on here and people would have loved that. So let's be real. Zeus is a pretty fun Beyblade and the godlier version of it is actually really good. Like, for what it was supposed to do, it was phenomenal. Had great stamina, great burst resistance, and the only main problem was that it was hard to, like, keep the balls loose and clean. Other than that, it's really good. But I had it where one of my t ball, one of the metal ball bearings in its tip of, on mine broke, so I had to use the one that came on the Vice Leopard Random Booster of Nightmare Longinus and swapped it because the ball bearing got gets stuck every so often. Okay, here's just really funky tip. This free moving ring and then a sharp tip, but uh, it, it's good in theory until you realize that this metal disc scrapes, meaning the tip's ability is useless on this Beyblade stock combo. And on top of that, sharp tips are just not that good anymore. They've been outclassed by tips like Drift and Bearing and Mobius been way outclassed. Sharp tips used to be good competitively, but they got outclassed easily. Plus, they destabilize way too much. Way too easily. <laughs> Which is why they've kind of faded out as a tip idea. Or at least faded out as the main gimmick of a tip. But Cartomi's probably going to keep that idea going for a while. Of that kind of tip. Also, I have some Speedstorm bays I still need to open, but I don't have a Speedstorm Stadium yet, so I'm going to wait till I get that to open them. I have a few others, too, that I need to open, but haven't. So here's Wyvern. It's literally just the ratchet disc in a lair. Well, that's weird. So yeah, it can go this way, but it can't go the other way. Unless it's knocked upward, in which case it doesn't matter which way, which is weird. That's strange, and it has... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rubber blades. Uh, one blade has a main rubber on the in a bigger side, and on the other blades, every other one, it has a tiny bit of rubber on the opposite side. And if this were to hit a clockwise bay and lock up, that would cause some serious attack power. But instead, it's supposed to spin, which is probably good. 
and it'll absorb attacks from a counterclockwise top, making it basically a super defense type bay <laughs> and spin stealer against counterclockwise tops. <laughs> Here's the brand new uh, one defense, by the way. Very nice color, I'd say. I like the purple color. Definitely something you'd want to put on Curse Satan, I'd say. I don't know. Now, here's the wyvern ring on its own, or the jet ring on its own. Kind of clear on the middle. Bit odd choice of color, you know. Now for the chip, wyvern. I gotta say, it's really chaotic, but it's super nice. It has like a spiral and dragon effect on it. I love that paint job. Very well made. And that's with, without the stickers, it looks that good. Okay, now for the chip core. Uh, yeah, pretty nice green and gold color, I'd say. Not too bad. Uh, it's really just a cosmetic thing, honestly. But still a very nice choice, especially since the god chip in the Tornado Wyvern was green. Which is a really nice detail they added, in my opinion. Very good choice of coloring. Really sticking to its roots it literally is tornado wyvern but but sparking like the layer is so similar the center is similar heck even the just about everything is just pretty much the same but bigger and better <laughs> and again that is kind of the whole idea of every season is bigger and better versions now, let's see the burst resistance, because I've heard it's not very good, but we'll give it a try. Oh my god, whoever said this isn't good was lying. This is tight. Jeez, that is really tight. Oh wow, that is easy to destabilize, and yeah, that tip really did not work. Yeah, it scrapes on the metal disc instead of the centerpiece, so you definitely want to change the tip on it. I mean, the, or the metal disc, either one. But I have to say it's better you change the tip instead of the metal disc because the metal disc is really competitive. Uh, metal disc, great. Tip, bad. Layer, dece, amazing. It's just pretty good bay overall, I'd say. Definitely worth the money, depending on what seller you buy it from. I got it for like 30 bucks on eBay, exactly. And I only chose that expensive of one because... Uh, it was a U.S. seller, so it'd be arriving much quicker, which was a good idea in my book, in my opinion. Plus, I had the kind of money to spare for that, so I figured, why not? So I did, and now four days, four or five, I don't know, like a week later, it's here, which is great. Not very heavy, I'd say. At least not compared to, like, loose for the end kind of heavy, but still pretty heavy. Uh, give me a sec to hydrate. Now, for the battles, because I'm sure everyone wants to see battles. And they figure, what better first opponent than Lucifer the End? The Beyblade I unboxed on a video yesterday, maybe the day before, I don't remember. Eh, who cares? Now to grab my launcher. Okay, I think it's only appropriate to use a sparking launcher, but... I don't want to have to switch between sparking launchers for different rotation bays, so I'm just going to use my LR Achilles launcher with the uh, special grip of mine I use. I got the uh, grip from a see-through part, and I got the speed part of it from the Achilles set, which is now way too priced up on eBay. <laughs> or Amazon, I mean. Now, it's probably expensive on eBay, too, if I'm being honest. I don't know. It's gotten older, so demand for it's probably gotten better. Especially since it came with such good parts. Plus, long launcher. Long launchers are always fun. In fact, I'm thinking I'm going to save up next for the uh, uh, Limit Break set. But I'm not sure. I have a friend of mine who owns it, and I am super jealous of him. Seriously, Andrew, I'm jealous of you. Also, thank you for showing me it on a Discord call. So I was really excited to learn more about the set, so thank you for that, my friend. Also, thank you very much for making my YouTube channel logos. Uh, that means a lot to me as well. Good friend. 10 out of 10. You don't, 
you probably never heard of him, and to be honest, at the same time, you probably never heard of me until you found my videos. But he does some pretty good edits for like uh, vi picture, like uh, logos for YouTube and stuff like that. And that's how I got mine. He was literally just doing commissions on the Beyblade Amino for like no charge at all. So I figured I'd hit him up on the idea of making me a logo for this channel. Because it used to just be the channel mascot was the picture, and that was kind of bland. Doesn't say anything about my content. So, yeah, when I got him to make that for me, that was awesome. And then we found things in common. We just became friends rather than business partners, which rocks. He's a good friend. Wish I'd met him sooner. Yeah. Yeah. All right, time to grab bait blades. Okay, Rage Longinus. Who's for the end? And let's pick something a little weaker as well. Okay, here we go. Uh, Glide Ragnarok. That's a good selection of base. And now to continue. There, where the heck is my launcher? I am so disorganized today. I was just in a frantic trying to get this recorded. <laughs> okay, now for the test launch. First I'll do a weak launch, then a medium, and then a hard launch. Okay, so first launch, weak. Pretty smooth, very quiet. And what do you expect? Defense type. Yeah. But it scrapes a lot because the tip ability doesn't work with this metal disc. Cartomi didn't plan that very well. Now for a more medium launch. Again, just super quiet because it's a defense type with a sharp tip. Of course it's going to be quiet. Oh, that's weird. When you grab it, it sounds like a razor or something. Now for a hard launch. Three, two, one, go. That's something. Okay, that is really pretty when it's spinning. This is definitely a good Beyblade. Just doesn't have a good stock combo. Because its tip and metal disc don't work well together. On their own, they'd probably be pretty viable parts, but together they don't work the best. Okay, so for the first opponent, I'll start off with Glide Ragnarok, just taking it easy. Three, two, one, two. Oh, crud. Piece of cotton or something's in here. Three, two, one, two. Quite the battle. Very bland. Oh, that's not bland. Was bland. Now it ain't. Destroy it, Wyvern, even though you have the type disadvantage, Ragnarok sucks. Oh god, the destabilization. Victory! Wyvern is victorious, as it should be. Know your place, Ragnarok. Know your place. Always know your place. <laughs> yeah, the only Ragnarok that was decent is the Godlayer Ragnarok, if I'm being honest. That one was pretty good. At least it was decent. Not good, but decent. Plus, its frame is still used competitively to this day, so I'd say it's still worthy buy. Now I'm going to do uh, loose for the end. Three, two, one, go. Shoot. Oh, that's a loud one. Oh, 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 shoot. And the battle is on. Who is the better defense type? Villain character with a Beyblade as heavy as Rage Luminous? Or some little Wyvern? Of course Wyvern wins. Of course the dragon beat Lucifer. Dragons are just that powerful, I guess. That and the Drift Driver isn't as good as it seems against the same rotation base. I'm sure if you had a better tip, like bearing or so, it'd be better, but the burst resistance is weak, so, you know, gotta weigh out your options better. Okay, now for the final matchup, we have Rage Longinus. I'm gonna watch Wyvern first for this battle because I think that would be a bit easier to control. Launcher tried to get stuck on me. Okay, in left mode now. Three, two, one, go shoot. Oh, dang. Just bullied it. Absorb Wyvern. Oh, crap. It's working. Oh, it's grinding. Uh, it was doing good until it got knocked into the wall. Where it just decided to camp like an idiot. It's kind of a gaming term. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you just seem confused guess uh yeah i think this is a pretty good beyblade 
Not sure I would have spent $30 had I known its performance would be as mediocre as this. Then again, that's my fault for not listening to the reviews as t intensely. Still a fun Beyblade. I'd recommend buying it, I'd say. Pretty fun. Oh, crap. Fell. Go. Shoot! Now let's see who wins. Because Wyvern has rubber absorbing ability. Absorb. Quit grinding, you, you dingus. You have the type advantage, you stupid Wyvern. Eh, what am I thinking? Stock Rage is powerful. Stock Rage is the best stock Beyblade. Why would I expect it to win against that? Uh, I just have too much hope in my favorite Beyblade. <laughs> One of my favorite Beyblades, that is. If I were to say my overall favorite, it's probably obvious. Or at least you'd think it's obvious. You'd probably think, judging by my logo, it's Spriggan Requiem. Judging by, you know, logo and name. Jake Requiem, so it makes sense. But actually, of all the Bays, I have to say my favorite right now. It, like, it, well, maybe my not my favorite, but my top three have got to be Loose for the End, uh, Spriggan Requiem, and uh, World Spriggan. And for, can't forget another bay, even though this was top three, Rage Longinus. Those are my top four bays right now. Because, at least for its time, Spriggan Requiem was pretty overpowered. It, it destroyed the competitive meta to a point where it got banned at one point, I think. Seriously, that thing was a beast. Not as powerful nowadays, but its parts are still used competitively. At least the tip is. In fact, at the tournament I hosted last year, I still saw somebody using the zero bump bearing on a Spriggan Requiem. Still made it to the top three. Then again, this was a tournament for all ages, for all bays. So, I mean, only makes sense that they would still be using that kind of combo and make it as far as they did. Because not many people have good competitive combos. You know? Uh, let's see, what should I do now? Well, I guess I should give my overall thoughts on this and move the stadium. Okay, so my overall thought... The hell? Huh. Uh, give me a moment. One of my Beyblade stadiums just decided to eat itself off of my stack of Beyblade stadiums. Okay, now that's averted. Averted. Um, yeah, Wyvern, great color scheme, great metal disc. Tip doesn't really work how it's intended to, sadly, due to its combo. Uh, the tip was still a great concept and great idea, but just wasn't executed very well. Still, good job, and you can always just change it to, like, the Atomic Driver or Revolve or something. To be honest, I think it would work better on Revolve than just... Still, Just is a good tip on its own, I'm sure, if you can find a combo that utilizes it, but I doubt you'll see Just competitively anytime soon, or ever, really. Still, fun Beyblade. I'd recommend buying it if you want uh, decent parts and a new Wyvern. I mean, let's be real. Who isn't a fan of Wyvern? It's just a fun Bay. Fun ability, fun character in the show. Uh, it's a dragon. What's not to like about dragons, obviously? Even though we have way too many dragon Beyblades. Why can't we get more of other ones? Like more demon-themed Beyblades. We have very few of those, I think. I mean, I know there's a good amount, but not as many as there are dragon Beyblades. So, I think that'd be cool. Heck, I even contemplated making 3D printing a Beyblade, but I don't have a 3D printer. Or money to buy one, obviously. And I'm especially not gonna when I'm saving up for the DX Limit Break set. <laughs> Because 3D printers are like three, two, three hundred dollars, I think. No, they're more like one to two hundred for a decent one. Anyways, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit ranting and just end the video. <laughs> uh, I hope you all enjoyed this video and un unboxing and review of Jet Wyvern, Beyblade B177, I believe. That was 177. Yeah. Oh wait, I don't have my previous Wyverns to compare it to. Well, that sucks. Then again, I never had the Japanese ones to begin with. So, yeah, overall, I'd say 8 out of 10 could have been, could be better, but it was pretty decent for what it is. I'd say if you're a fan of Wyvern and you want some extra parts, go for it. But if you're getting this as your first Beyblade, I would definitely say not to do that because there's not really much to it. But 
you're just trying to add to your collection, I'd say it's worth going for. Decent clicking, decent parts, decent color scheme, great ability on the layer, bad ability on the tip. And there's always the chance you can get a purple chassis on this, which is awesome. Maybe it's blue, I don't remember. Still, fun Beyblade, I'd recommend buying it. That's all for me. Bye.